Hello everybody and welcome to lesson five of your science learning where we're going to be looking at and exploring what is an advent inventor. So we'll start with our no more remembering more as we always do every lesson. So our true or false question today says absorbent means a material sucks up water. True or false? You can either call out the answer or you can write it down on a piece of paper in front of you. Question two, our multiple choice question. Which of these is not a property? Flexible, rigid, cotton or soft? You can write your answer down or call it out. A recall question linking back to our learning from last week is this, what is the opposite of absorbent? And our looking back, which is linked in really well with your year one learning, what animal has fins, scales, and lives in water? I'll give you a moment just to have a think about your answers for those last two. Okay, so let's get our checking pens out just to see how we did in the uh, no more, remember more today. So absorbent means the material sucks up water. That would be false. It is the word soak. Remember, Miss Bryant does not want us to use that word suck up when we're talking about if something's an absorbent material. We're soaking up the water. Which of these is not a property? Cotton is actually a material, not a property. OK, so remember, well done, those of you who said C, cotton. Right, then I'll recall, what was the opposite of absorbent? Well done, hopefully most of you made your connections to last week's science learning, which was waterproof. And then finally, what animal has fins, scales and lives in water? This has made, definitely made Mrs. Lee think, and you would be right if you said fish, super. So we talked about what we're gonna be looking at today, which is the question, what is an inventor? So our success criteria today is that you are going to, by the end of the lesson, be able to define what an inventor is, know how to use a secondary source to find information about that inventor, and give examples of inventors and the materials that they have discovered. So our key words, our key vocabulary for this week, we're going to do my turn, your turn, so you can call it out at the screen, inventors. Macintosh. Tarmac. You might know some of these words already. Okay, so whilst we can't do turn to your partner, I want you to have a think, maybe you can tell an adult and discuss this with an adult in your house or, or a sibling or a relative. What do you think an inventor is? Somebody who, what is it, the word, what does inventor mean? What's, what's that person do? What's that job? There are some clues in the images on the screen if you need a bit of a hint. Okay, hopefully you've had a think about what an inventor is, and it's a person who makes something new. That word invent, okay, so it means to like create, to build, to make something new. So we've already picked off one of our success criteria for today, which means about defining an inventor, because we know that it's someone that makes something new. So where can we find then information about inventors? The, the inventors have been finding out things, making things in history for, in, and through various different um, areas for years and years and years. So there's two clues on the screen right now. One of those is an, an encyclopedia and one of those is www. We should hopefully give you a clue. So we call these types of um, sources of information secondary sources. OK, now, if you make the link back to our history learning, where we've talked about the idea of primary and secondary sources. We know a primary source is something that happened at the time, or it can also be when you speak to somebody that's directly involved at the time of that um, invention or the thing that's been made happening and taking place. But secondary source is then one step back from that, from the primary source. So, for example, information books. So non-fiction books are generally can give you some information about a particular person or thing or item or object. And the internet, you can find a lot of information on the internet, but you do need to check their reliability as well. So 
already. We're whizzing through the success criteria today. We know now how to use a secondary source to find information. You can use the books and computers to help you do that, okay? So, we are going to be looking and finding out a lot of information about these three inventors that were really important to the development of materials at the time that they were around. So, the first one, and I'm going to say my turn first, John Dunlop, your turn. The next one, Charles Mackintosh, your turn. My turn, John McAdam, your turn. Super. Okay, so here is information, some information about Charles Mackintosh. And if we go back to the screen we just looked at, he's a very, very uh, smart looking man sitting in the middle on the chair, okay? That's Charles Mackintosh. And I want you to think about that word Mackintosh and see if you can make some connections in a moment. So he was a chemist who invented waterproof clothing. Now, some of you might actually know that waterproof jackets are also sometimes called Macs. Have you got your Mac today? Okay, perhaps um, some of your relatives in your house actually can tell you that, that that's definitely what that is. So he was known for making waterproof Macs or waterproof clothing. He was born in Glasgow in 1766 and he invented a spe special bleaching powder which made both the men very, very rich because obviously these inventions would benefit a lot of people. So it meant that often inventors could earn a lot of money for creating these new things. Now, while trying to find a use for some waste products, so products that are not needed, he first tested a particular product on cloth. And he took out a patent for that in 1823, which means he had to go and say, this is what I've created. Nobody else can use it. And this is, and this, um, we're the only company, we're the only group of people that can actually do it. Now, he was also a, elected a fellow of the Royal Society in the same year because of all of his work and things that he made. And in, by 1836, raincoats which bore his name Macintoshes there we go or Max were hugely popular and to this day the term a plastic Mac or a pack a Mac depending on um, where you come where you come from in the country is still used for a waterproof coat and I, I know they definitely do pack a Macs in Primark when um, when they've been open because I've definitely picked one up in the last couple of years and he died in 1843 now we've also then got John Boyd Dunlop. Now he was a vet and an inventor and he created the inflatable tyre, a device that we still use today. He was born in Scotland and he found that solid wood, rubber or iron wheels made cycling difficult on the bumpy and rough roads. So what he thought was that he was going to test an inflatable one on his son's tricycle, which is a three wheeled bike. And in 1889, cyclist Willie Hume tested Dunlop's tyres. So some of you might have made that connection, especially if you're into things like racing um, with cars. You'll know that Dunlop is quite a famous tyre company. And he set up his own company and it was known as the Pneumatic Tire and Booth Cycle Agency. It's a very, very long name. So because of that long name, in 1896, the company was renamed Dunlop Rubber. And the company also went on to make different types of car tires as well as aeroplane tires and golf balls. So he's not just stuck into the um, industry of making tires, he's gone into other fields as well. But he never really became rich for his, his invention and he died unexpectedly in 1921. John McAdam. So you'll notice that all of these inventors all come from Scotland, okay? He was born in Scotland on the 21st of September 1756 and he was the youngest of 10 children. John McAdam recognised there was a problem with the road surfaces because they were often muddy and slippy which made them quite dangerous for carts and vehicles that were on those roads. And he invented a very new process called macadamisation for building roads with a smooth, hard surface. 
So what he did was he made the roads with a curved surface so that water would run off. So it would go along the edges of the road. And this process was used around the world. And tar was later used to produce the smooth, hard wearing road surfaces that we use today. And tarmacadam or tarmac for short. So that's what you still see on roads that they use when they're creating them even today. And he died in 1836 at the age of 80. Now, what Miss Bright and I um, would like you to do today is we've got all got a chart on either purple mash or in your um, learning packs that you've taken or collected from school so you've got the three inventors that we looked at today Charles McIntosh John Dunlop and John McAdam now what we would like you to do is identify by going back through the PowerPoint what did they invent and you can just write one word or a couple of um, words if need be into the boxes there how did they invent it? Now that might be a little bit of a longer sentence in there. Were they rich from their inventions? What was their birth date? Their death date, when did they die? And any other interesting information that you think you found out about those three inventors? So what we've been able to do is been able to cover all of our three success criteria today. So we've talked about already what an inventor is, somebody that creates and makes something new and innovative. We know how and where we can use, what secondary sources we can use in order to find information. So we can look at information books or on the internet to find out some facts about inventors. And you've been able to, when you've completed your um, chart, to give examples of inventors and the materials that they actually discovered. So if you would then also like to challenge yourself, because we all know that that's what some of you like to do every lesson that you um, come into, can you go and find out about an inventor of your choice? So there is a website link there, www.bbc.co.uk slash bite size. And that, that link will take you directly to a website. So I'm just going to show you how you can do that. So I'm going to stop sharing that screen. And I'm going to click on the link. And then I'm going to share with you where it will take you. So If you click on the link, you will see that it's taken to me to this scientists and engineers link. So you've got other inventors and some are actually even linked to our classes in school because we've got a Curie class in year six, haven't we? So we've got Isambard, Isambard Kingdom Brunel and what he um, created. He was a very, very famous engineer at the time. Marie Curie, so nice to see we've got some female inventors coming through. Mary Anning, so you'll be uh, learning a little bit about Mary Anning when you get into year three. And some of you should recognise this figure, Professor Stephen Hawking. So, um, and then it will tell you all about what each of those particular scientists or engineers created. Okay, so you can find some extra information. So there'll be some extra hub points for those of you who decide to do that. So if I then go back to my PowerPoint that I had a minute ago. Okay, so. We're going to review the knowledge now and seeing if we uh, can answer the true or false question. So question number one says an inventor is a new material. Is that true or is that false? Write your answer down or call out. Well done those of you who said false. An inventor is not a new material. We know it's somebody that makes something new. Charles McIntosh invented the rain cloak. So you can either write true or false down on your piece of paper in front of you, or you can call it out at the screen. True, remember, you've got that Mac. Okay, so the Mac clue in there tells you that he did in fact invent the raincoat. So question three, you can trust everything you read on the internet. 
give you a second. False, okay? You do need to make sure that your information comes from a reputable source, something that you can trust. Secondary sources include books and the World Wide Web. True or false? Call it out onto the, or call it to your screen or tell an adult around you. That would be true. Secondary sources do include books and the World Wide Web. Number five, question five, anyone can be an inventor. True or false? True, you can create things all the time. People have the greatest imagination. And if it means that people's lives are better or things improve as a result, then you can actually make, as some of the inventors did, quite a lot of money from that. So thank you everybody for coming to our science learning for today and I hope that you have uh, enjoyed what we've covered and also if you have any questions you know that you can contact us via the school but good luck uh, with your task today and we look forward to seeing what information you're able to remember to recall about the scientists that we looked at today and the inventors sorry john dunlop charles mcintosh and john mcadam good luck and we shall see you next week for our last lesson of the half term on materials goodbye you two